Hi everyone, this is Sean Frangella with PremiumBeat.com and today we're going to go over how to model and texture this flat screen TV with a playable video texture inside of the screen using polygonal modeling and some texturing techniques as well as if we look at this rendered animation putting together some additional little details like these little buttons and pulling the back out a bit if we're thinking about the power supply and adding a bit of more detail so it's not just a cube with the screen. So if I look at my Cinema 4D file, here's our model that we'll be working towards. And as I mentioned, here's our little details and those will be some fun little things to build out. So let's just get started. I'm going to, in Cinema 4D, start a new file. And my main thing I'm gonna start from to build this out is I'm just gonna drop a cube into my scene and I'm going to turn on my display lines because I like to work that way and it'll help when we start pulling this apart. And for my cube, I'm going to put this at 1600 by 900 and if I zoom out that's going to give me my aspect ratio of an HD TV screen and that's going to help a lot when we're trying to get this accurate and dropping in textures and for Z I'll pull that in a bit and that doesn't need to be as precise let's just put that at something like 80 and that will be the depth of my TV screen. Now to start getting those beveled edges down here, I'm gonna turn on fillet caps and that's gonna give me a start of my bevel, but it's a little too extreme. So down here, I'm going to pull the radius down just so it's a bit of a bevel. And that's gonna help me get a start for these edges and not add too much geometry. And I could change the subdivisions, but I'll just leave it at five for now because I'm gonna want at least one of those edges for later. Now, as we're getting into this later, I know that I'm gonna need a couple segments and to get those in, I'm just gonna grab segments X and put it up to three, and that'll give me these two lines. Now, what I wanna do to be able to pick and pull this apart is click this button to make it editable or press C, but what I like to do is make a copy of it first and then turn that off just in case I need to go back. It's a good habit to get into in my opinion. And now I'm gonna grab this new cube and press C, and now it's no longer a cube, it's just geometry that I can pick apart with points, edges, or polygons over here. And another way I can get to these menus quickly is hold V and go up to tools and grab my polygons, edges, or points here. So to start setting this up, what I wanna do is grab edges and I wanna grab these two lines all the way around, but I don't wanna to have to click each little segment. So what I can do is a shortcut to pull up my modeling shortcuts is if I press U, that's gonna bring up these options, and then I can press L, and that's gonna give me loops. And then I can just click this one and this one, and I have the whole loops all the way around. And what I wanna do is in this view or my front view that I can see over here, rather than move them separately, I'm gonna press T to scale, and then I can just scale them evenly, and that's gonna pull them smoothly. And I want to use this as kind of the edges of my screen, and I'm gonna inset that a bit. Now for the tops, I wanna to do the same thing as I'm just going to go back to my edges and press UL and I'll grab this one and this one down at the bottom and I'll just T and just scale those down a bit so it looks close to even. And now we can see we're already starting to get where the screen can fall and we have our aspect ratio set up and that's working nicely. And at this point or any time I could go to filter and turn off my grid because I don't need it in this case. I'm not gonna put anything on the floor. So just turn that off. And now let's build out that screen. So I'm gonna go into polygons mode and what I wanna do is grab this polygon and rather than just having it playing flat on here, I want to extrude this in and then backwards and bevel those edges. So for extruding it, I'm gonna press I to extrude in and just drag left and that's gonna extrude my geometry in from there. And then I'm gonna press D and that's gonna extrude and allow me to go back and forth. So I could just pull that in just a little bit just to give it some nice geometry, but figure this is a flat screen TV so it should be pretty smooth. And that gives me my screen. However, I want these edges to match the bevel of these or at least mimic the idea of smooth edges because if we press Command R to render, we can see that we're getting some nice 
smoothness on these bevels, but these are just really sharp. And that's very rarely how objects ever are in real life. So what I want to do is bevel those two similar to this. And the way I could do that is same idea. I'm going to grab my edges and I'm going to press UL for loop and I'm going to grab this one and this one. And then to get my bevel tool, I'm going to use another shortcut. I'm going to press M for this one and then S and that's going to give me my bevel menu. And I can just drag to the right. You can, you can see it's beveling and adding geometry to smooth that out. And I can add more subdivisions if I wanted or offset it more in this menu over here, depending on how much complexity I want to add. So now if we render that, you can see that it's adding some nice little detail even without lights. And that's helpful and you want to use that when you're doing hard surface modeling to mimic the smoothness of real corners and not have everything be too sharp. So you can see that we're already starting to get there, but let's add a little more interest to this. Let's add some of those buttons and let's also put a logo on the bottom and pull the back out a bit. Now let's create that little inset and put some power and volume buttons and some little complexity on this side. So what I want to do is subdivide this polygon here. And a quick way to do that if, is if I follow that same beveling idea, is I'm just going to do I to inner extrude and pull that in just a bit. And then I'm going to grab edges and grab this one up here. And I can just pull that one down. And if I look at my side view, I can see a little better what I'm doing. And I'm just going to pull that down and create a small little rectangle down here that I can then grab again and do the same idea of I for inner extrude. And then I'm going to D for main extrude and just pull that just a little bit back. And if we do a quick command R again, we can see what we're doing. We're just offsetting this a little bit so we can kind of tuck those buttons in there and still keep it looking really smooth. So let's just drop some quick buttons in there. I'm going to do another cube and I'm just going to add fillets on that and scale the whole thing down a bit with T. And then in my multiple views, I'm going to slide that over and tuck it into place in the side of my little button area. And I'll just press T again to scale that down a bit and just create the idea of a rectangular power button. And that'll kind of be our start to our little buttons and make it look like there's you know a lot going on in there. So what I want to do is create one main button and that could be kind of my power button and then some volume buttons and cut out some HDMI slots for cables and all that sort of stuff that's probably on real TVs. So That'll be my other button. And then to get smaller ones, I'm just going to duplicate that by holding command and dragging and I'll drag that one down and then I can just scale it down a bit just so it doesn't look like it's the same exact button. And we'll figure we can have two sets of buttons here. We'll have this one that will slide in and duplicate again. And these could be our volume buttons. And then I'm just going to hold shift and grab both of them and command to drag and duplicate. And then it duplicates both of them and those will be my channel buttons. Now what I want to do at the bottom is cut out a little slot for a cable and then we can do some stuff with cylinders up here to cut out little areas for other kinds of cables just to make it look interesting down there. So to cut that out, I'm going to duplicate one of these smaller ones, same idea, hold command and just drag this down and an HDMI cable is a little more thinner and less beveled. So we'll pull this down a bit and get it like 0.5. And to cut that out, I'm going to grab a bool object from up here. And now would be a good time to start naming these. So I'll call this main TV. And these can just be different names for what they are. So HDMI cut, and this could be button. And we'll just do button, 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 power, button. And while we're at this, we might as well group all of our buttons. So if I click and shift grab all of these buttons and then press option G, it's going to drop those into a null, which is kind of like a group, which is great because I can just keep track of all these little things. So anyway, to get back to our HDMI cable cutting, I have this bool object. And what I want to do is grab my cut and my main TV and drop both of them in there and make sure I have the TV first. And if we look at our bool object, it's a subtract B. So it's going to take a and cut B out of it. And if we 
pan around, now we can see that we've cut in here and created a little slot. And we can still grab that cut object and drag it in or out or move it and make it more or less deep and turn on and off the bool to still edit those. And these, this is a really great way to work with these. Now we could also make this editable and bevel these edges, but it's really small and that's enough detail for this little tiny area. So now I wanna create some more little plugs in there and what I wanna do is use a cylinder and a good trick for getting it over that same spot is when I drop this in, if I hold option, it's gonna make it a child of that object that I've selected and then it's right over there. And it's gonna look wrong because it's also cutting in there. But what I can do is just turn off this bool for a second and just rotate this in place. And now if we look at our side view, we can see that it's right in place and that's great because it's gonna save us a lot of time with moving it over. And then when it's there, I can take it out of the parent HDMI and just get this back set up and it's a good little shortcut to move objects to where you want them to be. And then I can just scale this down and put it here and make it a little smaller. And then we get everything lined up, which is nice. So what I wanna do is have three little holes in there. So I'm just going to duplicate that cylinder again and drag it down and then just duplicate again. And then I have three little cylinders and now I wanna use all three of these objects to cut out of this main TV. So what I can do, if we look at the bool object and turn it back on, it's not gonna work. It's only gonna do the first one. However, it also works with groups. So if we grab these ones and all the cylinders and put those in a group with option G, you can see that then it's gonna work and it's gonna cut out that entire null, which again is what we wanna do and that's great. And if we do a quick command R, we can see that we're getting our holes cut in, it's looking nice, we don't have lights, but we got some additional detail and we're getting there and it's looking good so far. So one little extra detail I can do is if I want to grab a tube and have little rings around these, if I wanted to color them or have little you know slots to put the little cables in, I'm gonna turn off my bool and I can grab this first cylinder and do that same trick of I'm gonna click and hold and then for the tube hold option and it's gonna put it over there and it's gonna be huge, but that's fine because then I can just pull that cylinder back out. And now if I scale this tube down, it's exactly in place around that cylinder. And that's great because it's gonna exactly line up and I can just get it close to it. And then on my tube, I can pull the inner radius out a bit and you can see that it lines up pretty nicely, which is great. And if we zoom in here, I'm going to grab this tube and take it out of the bowl completely because it doesn't need to cut anything out and then I'm gonna turn back on my bool and slide this out with E, and we can see that we have this nice little ring that's a nice little extra bit of detail. And I can even bevel that with the two properties by turning on fillet caps. If I zoom in here, it's getting nicely smoothed out. And if I want three of these, since it's already lining up, I can just easily hold Command and duplicate that and then drag it down and line those up that way. And now I have three rings and I can make them different colors or all one color, whatever I wanna do. And I'm just gonna grab those all and hold option G to put them in a group, call those cable rings, just to keep organized and it'll help out when I'm doing textures later. So if I zoom out here, again, we can see that that's a nice bit of detail and we'll add a lot for later. So the back is flat and that's fine, but if we wanted to add a little more detail, we could do that same process as I'm gonna grab just one polygon from this main TV here, and then I'm gonna do my same trick of inner extrude to get a little more geometry, and then I'm just gonna grab this edge and pull it down. And what I wanna do is grab this polygon here, and then same idea, I'm gonna inner extrude again, and then I'm going to do my main extrude with D, and if I look at my right view, I can see that I'm just gonna pull that out a bit and I can hold shift and it's gonna snap. And then if I wanna line this up a bit, in this view, I can grab my points. And what I wanna do when I'm on points is grab my rectangle selection and then I wanna make sure only select visible elements is off. And then if I click and drag, we can see if we spin around here, it's, it's grabbing both of them, which is good because then I can move these down 
and align them up. And then I can grab these first ones and then I can grab these top ones and maybe pull them in just so it looks like it's a little angled and smooth. And then for this back part, if we're thinking there's power there, but we want to smooth it out, we're going to stick with our same techniques of beveling these edges. So I'm going to grab my edges and what I want to do is change this to live selection. And I'm just going to grab this one and same idea. We can press UL for loop and I'll grab this one and this inner one and then go back to live selection. And I want to grab these four corners because they're big enough now where we'll notice and we want to bevel those with the same smoothness as these inner curves. So I'll just grab those four. And then when I have all those selected, I can press M and then S for bevel and just pull those out and add a bit of smoothing, but not go so far that it starts to break my object. So the key with this is just little details. And again, if I just go to model mode and then command R, you can see that this really helps when light is catching these edges. So the last little thing we're going to want to do for our main TV is just drop some text on there for a nice little logo. So to do that, I'm going to go into MoGraph, MoText, and for my MoText, I'll just type premium beat, and I'll change this to something that looks a little better and more appropriate, like Franklin Gothic, and that's fine. And for this, I'm just going to change it to align middle and then look at my other views and just scale this height down and drop this into place on the bottom of the TV in the front here. So down here and then in my top view, just slide it in. And again, the just nice little detail of we're thinking this is a little logo and it's labeled. You just drop that in and be really subtle about it. So that's our model. The key here with getting this looking like it's a real playing TV screen is going to be a couple little details in the textures. So again, if I command R, it's all there, but we have no lights and textures. And that's really one of the keys to 3D. So that's our model. If I do command R to do a quick render, we can see that we've added some nice details. But what's really going to make this work is in the textures. And since I already grouped everything, that's going to help save me some time. So I'm just going to rename this bool TV. And I want to group everything that I'm going to use the same textures as. So this is my TV cable rings and buttons and Motex. That's fine. And I know I want to make all those the same color to save some time. So I'm just going to grab all those and put those in a group and I'll call those buttons. And now I'm just going to make some basic textures for the edges and the buttons. And I'm just going to double click down here and we'll call this one TV. And I'm just going to do color black and if we're thinking this is a sharp flat screen tv it's probably really reflective so i'll turn on reflection and texture add fresnel and then i'm just going to put the blurriness way up at like 30 percent and i'm going to drag that onto my bool tv and then it's going to texture my whole tv and i want some differences in the buttons so to quickly add another texture i'm just going to hold command down here and drag that and that's going to duplicate that texture and then if I double click that, I can call that buttons and I'm just going to change the color from white to black. And then I've quickly made two basic textures that have similar properties. So for that one, I'm just going to drag that onto all my buttons and that's going to texture everything. That's the buttons. Now I want to have a separate texture for my screen. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab my main TV and I'm going to just grab polygons and adjust this face. And then I want to drop a video onto this and have that be playing just on this face. So what I want to do is make a new texture of just a video. And I have some videos of these TV noise images, or you could put anything on here, which is cool. And to get that in here, I'm just going to drag on this from finder and drop it into my texture area. And it's going to create a new texture from this and I don't need to copy it. And now I have this playable video as a texture and with my TV and just this face grabbed I want to drop it onto here and it's going to put that texture just on that polygon but if I play it's not going to do anything and what I need to do is double click on the texture and go to editor and turn on animated preview so now if I play this it's going to be playing within that TV and that's really cool because this could be anything and if we do command R we can see that it's rendering and that's awesome and working well now, if we want to push this even a little further, what we can think about is if this is the playable TV screen, it would probably have a little bit of luminance because it's actually a light that's emitting light. So I could turn on luminance and then just turn that down to like 10 
and then a bit of a glow. So I'll turn on glow and turn this down a lot to like 50 and I'll just drink 200. If I real quick turn on my render settings and make this look a little better when I render and turn on physical renderer and ambient occlusion, we can see we haven't even added any lights or anything, but, but if I do option R to just area render, we can see that we have our screen and now it has this playing video if I scrub through. And if we turn on and off luminance and glow, you can see that it's just a little bit of detail that's helping a bit. And again, if I just back up to the front with a shift X and then play, we're getting this nice animation that's playing within our screen and that's working well. Now we could do this another way is if we just took this face and we could add a cinema 4d tag, external compositing and send it to after effects and do this separately. But if you just want to do this all in cinema 4d, this is a good way to get this video playing on the screen. So that was how to set up this TV model with some nice little polygonal modeling details and get the texture to play a separate little video playing on it. You could keep going and set up lights and some camera moves or really go into these details if you're thinking about it's close up and keep adding more detail as you want to or it can make different types of TVs. But this will get you there and get you started with the textures. So I hope you learned a lot. This has been Sean Frangella for PremiumBeat.com teaching you how to make this 3D model of a flat screen TV with a playing screen. Be sure to stop by PremiumBeat.com for all your music and sound effects needs and check out the blog on PremiumBeat.com for tips and tricks on Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other animation and compositing apps. And if you want to see more of what I do, you can check out my YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash SeanFrangella or SeanFrangella.com. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to all Premium Beats channels on YouTube and Vimeo to get more animation tutorials and I will see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.